Hello, and welcome to the Gamer's Closet. I'm your host, Douglas Weed, and today we're going to be talking about Northwest Passage. Northwest Passage is a game manufactured in 1969 by Impact Communications Incorporated. Uh, the game is for two to six players, runs for about a half an hour of game time, and is rated for ages 10 and up. But let's dig into it a little further, shall we? The Northwest Passage is a sea route to the Pacific Ocean through the Arctic Ocean along the northern coast of North America via waterways through the Canadian Arctic Archipelago. The various islands of the archipelago are separated from one another and from the Canadian mainland by a series of Arctic waterways collectively known as the Northwest Passages or the Northwestern Passages. For centuries, European explorers sought a navigable passage as a possible trade route to Asia. An icebound northern route was discovered in 1850 by the Irish explorer Robert McClure. It was through a more southerly opening in an area explored by the Scotsman John Ray in 1854 that Norwegian Ronald Amundsen made the first complete passage in 1903 to 1906. Not until 2009, the Arctic pack ice prevented regular marine shipping through most of the year. Arctic ice decline has rendered the waterways more navigatable for ice navigation. In this game, you play as an oil tanker and have to navigate the Northwest Passage to the Alaskan oil fields, where you collect oil and bring it back to Humble City, the hub for the Humble Oil Company. Pictured on the cover of this game is the SS Manhattan, which is the first commercial oil tanker to actually transverse the Northwest Passage by a consortium of oil companies to see if the sea route was viable to haul oil. It was later abandoned in favor of the Alaskan oil pipeline, as shipping was deemed commercially unviable. This game does come with multiple pieces. It does come with a game board that has a second side on it that covers the history of the Northwest Passage, one clear dice, one direction spinner, six colored ships in red, orange, white, blue, yellow, and green, six colored oil tanks, red, orange, white, blue, yellow, and green, one black oil field disc holder, and 36 red oil discs. The object of the game is to see who brings the most amount of oil to Humble City. The oil is brought in from the Alaskan oil fields via the Northwest Passage. The ship starts out from Humble City and proceeds around the board until they reach the Alaskan oil fields. Here they pick up oil and carry it on the ships until they reach Humble City where the oil barrel discs are deposited on each individual oil storage tank of the same color of the tanker ship. When all of the oil barrel discs are gone from the Alaskan oil fields, the winner of the game is whoever has the most amount of oil in their own oil storage tanks on the spindle. To set up this game, place the playing board on the table, take out the spinner, and set up the oil derrick and the oil barrel discs on the spindle on the board at the Alaskan oil fields. Place the oil storage tanks at Humble City. Each player picks the colored tanker of their choice. This game does contain two points of interest. The first is Humble City. Game starts from this point and the tankers move clockwise around the board. In order for a tanker to deposit oil into its oil reserve tank of its color, it must land at Humble City, either by moving the correct amount of spaces or by going there according to other rules on the board. The second point of interest is the Alaskan oil fields. When a tanker enters the oil fields, it may pick up one disc, which is a thousand barrels of oil. Each time it enters the oil field, it may pick up one disc. As in the case of the Humble City space, a tanker may pick up oil only if it lands directly on the Alaskan oil fields or gets there according to other rules. Please note, if you do not throw the correct number to land on these spaces, you must pass them and proceed around the board as usual. When a player picks up oil, they must place an oil disc on their tanker's mast. They may carry as many discs as they are physically able to on these masts. If a player cannot fit any more oil barrel discs on their mast, they cannot pick up more oil, even if they land on the Alaskan oil fields again. If a tanker lands on a blizzard space, the player must place the tanker in the blizzard square and spin the pointer. There are three paths going out of the blizzard center. When the pointer stops at numbers 1, 2, or 3, the tanker must proceed on that path to which the pointer and the number on the green arrow indicate. If a tanker lands on an ice jam space, players must place the tanker in the ice jam circle and then spin the spinner. Just as we covered in the blizzard spaces, the rules are exactly the same. 
If a player tosses break ice on the number die, they may change places with anyone else on the board. Therefore, they may change places with someone in Humble City Oil Reserves or the Alaskan Oil Fields, in which case they can deposit their oil or pick up more oil depending on which one they go into. If the player decides not to change places, they skip their turn. If a player lands on the break ice space, they may change places with anyone else on the board, except if they land there by another player's exchange. If, while resting on a break ice space, a player also tosses break ice on the number die, they receive a bonus of 3,000 barrels of oil, which is three oil discs, plus changing places. However, they may not have uh, the oil if there is no room on their tanker masts. The final type of spaces on the board are instruction spaces. If a player lands on these, they must follow the directions given. Some of these will help you and some of these will hurt you. If desired, the game can be shortened if you do want to use fewer oil tanker discs. Well, this has been an overview of Northwest Passage. Northwest Passage is a really strange, obscure game. It was released for one year in 1969 to coincide with the maiden voyage and successful completion of that voyage of the SS Manhattan, which again is pictured here on the front. Uh, the SS Manhattan is a ship that was put together uh, by four oil companies to determine if it was uh, commercially viable to get oil from Alaska to New Jersey. Um, it was later scrapped for the Alaskan pipeline, and this game is a direct result of the merchandising uh, marketing campaign for that ship journey. Um, it is a game that is manufactured by a marketing company and a commercial laboratory. Uh, it is a little obscure. It's a little hard to find. Um, there's not a lot of copies that I'm aware of of this game. Uh, the game itself is a pretty basic game. Um, it's just roll, spin, and move. It's a die roll spinner game, which is kind of a weird combination, um, but it works. Um, the only downside of this game is the um, instructional spaces send you back to Humble City a lot, or you get sent on pathways that you don't want to do. So you go into, you, you end up going around the board multiple times over and over and over and over again. So it gets a little redundant. Uh, I would honestly recommend house rules on this game because if you play straight rules, the game can get annoying really fast, especially if you get a whole series of bad die rolls. Um, one instance I had, I kept going back to Humble City over and over and over and over and over again, which got really tediously annoying fast. Um, the game is colorful, it's well designed, uh, it has this really neat clear see-through dice. Um, downside is the paper material on this isn't coated with anything, so it's really easy to get dirty, it's really easy to absorb water, so I would strongly recommend keeping moisture and water away from this game, because it will wipe it out fast. Um, other than that, it's a pretty basic game. I wouldn't really classify this as a strategy game because the die plays a lot of factors on this and like I said you're kind of at the mercy of the die whether it wants to work for you or not. Um, there is a little bit of strategy in this game but uh, the die kind of wipes out the usefulness of it. Um, the game itself goes online for about 20 bucks. It's really not hard to find a copy of it because it's not a very great game, but um, as it sits on by itself, it's a really strange game if you want to pull it out on a game night, a family night. It's kid-friendly. It's very basic rules. Uh, most 60s games are, um, but honestly, in my opinion, if you wanted to sit down and play a board game, I wouldn't play this one specifically. Um, i give it about a three or a four. I mean, it's a decent game, but it's not one I'm going to uh, raise my hand to sign up for and jump into. I mean, if there's nothing better to do, I'll play this. But honestly, there are better games out there. Um, for novelty value, sure, why not? It's a decent game for novelty value. It's something different. Um, if you haven't played it, I'd give it a shot. Um, like I said, it is a decent game, but there are better games on the market. Um, but uh, if you haven't played this game, 
it's worth at least one playthrough, maybe two, but uh, past that, unless you're going to readjust the rules with house rules, I would look for a different game. But uh, um, like I said, if you haven't played it, I'd recommend at least one playthrough of it, so I would recommend playing this game. Well, that's it from us for the Gamers Closet. We'd like to thank you for checking out our video on Northwest Passage from Impact Communications Incorporated. If there's a game in the future you'd like us to review or go over, please put it in the comments below. Please hit subscribe so that way you can be the first to check out our future content. And as always, please, have a great gaming day. Right.